Okay, back up a little bit. Rolling up. Oh, okay. Get this away from me. Kim here, homeschooling mom to almost five and chaos coordinator since 2009. I have children going into eighth grade, third grade, kindergarten, the roaring toddler years, and another one due in November. This video is going to cover what I'm doing for my soon to be third grader for her curriculum next year. I have a lot of videos explaining the whys. This is just gonna be explaining what we do. We're in our fifth year of homeschooling. I am a former teacher, so I do not buy a curriculum from a company. I kind of pick and choose, but a lot of what I do is very similar to what Sunlight does. So if you've never heard of Sunlight, check them out. My philosophy for homeschooling my kids is I wanna create independent learners that are critical thinkers on a book-based curriculum. Screens tend to make my kids go a little crazy. So I prefer to stick with books. The lighting starts to go down, the sun is setting. My husband took the four of the kids out for a bit so that I could have a little time to record. Oh, and she is quite the advanced reader. So when we get to the language arts section, it is more geared for older kids, but the program we use, you could very easily select a lower level to accommodate for um, the reading level of your child. So without further ado. Math. It's one that we've stuck with all the way. There's lots of other programs I'm sure out there, but this is the one I've chosen and stuck with it and kids are learning. So we're gonna stick with it. She's finishing up Delta and she'll be going into Gamma shortly into the next year. Core knowledge. One thing I absolutely love for uh, preschool through sixth grade is the core knowledge series. When I first started, I based a lot of my curriculum based on this until I found other resources that did the work for me. Um, and now my kids just read it like a book. It's a little older. Uh, most of the things are in black and white, but it's it really does read like a book. I just sign them certain pages. And to be honest, my eighth grader was a little disappointed when she was done with it. Spelling. Editor Kim here. I'm not quite sure she understood the assignment of expressing her feelings of each subject. So most of them, she looks the same. She does generally like school and I think she was a little nervous being on camera. If you've watched my eighth grade video, you'll see that we're starting a new vocabulary curriculum for her grade. And I'm skipping it for third grade this year. It's wordly wise. So if you're looking for a vocabulary curriculum, I would suggest that. To start off with, I personally don't have experience. That's what I'm trying to other kids. Um, she is such an advanced reader. I'm not worried about vocabulary retention and usage right now, but I'll add that in soon. Right now I'm focusing on spelling and spelling you see has really worked well for her. And what I like is that we are using sunlight curriculum as well. And it happens to go along with um, the theme for her spelling. So she's doing American history in her history and language arts and her spelling also goes along with it. So spelling you see level D for her. Critical thinking. At the beginning of each school year, the kids do a standardized testing. I have a video below explaining why we do standardized testing. One thing I had to add into the curriculum for my eighth grader, I also added into the younger grades. I got it from the Critical Thinking Company, which I personally love and would love to do everything with them, but it doesn't work with my kids' learning styles. They have this Building Thinking st Skills series from the Critical Thinking Company, and this one is for second through third grade. So she worked through most of it last year and she's continuing to work on it uh, next year. Just do a couple pages a day. Handwriting. A little louder. Handwriting. <laughs> so her print is getting better, but now we're working on cursive and I use a bunch of different resources. We draw with chalk outside, we do whiteboards, lots of different mediums we try, try with her. Um, but this one, the dot to dot has been my basis for just teaching her basic cursive. I have had to supervise it a little bit more than she would like. It's finally starting to click and she's getting the hang of it. So I think for my next child, I'll wait till third grade. What I mean by that is start in third grade. I started early second grade with her. Art appreciation, geography. For geography, I use the Art K-12 book series and they have draw the world, draw the US, draw Asia, draw Latin America, and whatever their history that they're working on is the one that I use for that year. And basically little by little, they learn to draw, this is the US. I have them work through the book over and over again and they compare their maps and the idea is that they eventually can just kind of freehand whatever piece of geography they're learning. So I have lots of artsy fartsy kids, and so they are drawn to things like this. For art appreciation, I love these. I've been using these for years. Picture study portfolios by Simply Charlotte Mason. This is the one for Raphael. It explains how to use it on, on the website, and if you buy one of these, they are worth the investment. Yeah, my kids can recognize different artists and different art styles and have their preferences. I just, I love it. Science or biology? It took me a few years to find this company, and I 
am in love. She's going to be going into biology for the grammar stage. It is a slightly easier curriculum than she's capable of, but she hasn't done biology yet. And I'm due in November, so I need a very easy science year and this kind of stuff interests her. So we're doing biology for the grammar stage. This is geared for kindergarten through fourth grade. And I think fourth grade is a bit of a stretch, but the supplemental materials they have that go with it are fantastic. This is the teacher guide. This is the student guide. The teacher guide you can use later on with different kids. They also have these lovely little boxes that they send all of your supplies in nice and neatly organized and you can look at the list and say oh that's stuff we have around the house yes but you know what when you need to do the um science experiment and you have lots of kids around it's really nice just to go okay here are the um cotton balls and rubber bands and beans that we need they're just they're all right here neatly packaged and then you have this little sheet and it actually tells you where it is in the box so you even have a bandana for one of them requires the kids to be blindfolded so they give you a blindfold it's really very economical. I love it and the kids love having their own boxes. The one downside is that they don't always tell you up front all the books you need. Just today when I was going through this I realized I'm missing two books. It is what it is. I'll purchase those on thrift books but the ones that I knew I needed were Vasher's Biology. It's kind of cartoony and then this one if you saw my eighth grade video you'll recognize this book. This is the one that they use for this year in the biology and then they have books based on ages and this is the one that fits hers and like I said there's a couple other books we're missing. Hoffman Academy. As far as music we do Hoffman Academy a couple years into this and I think she does a pretty good job. She enjoys it. Both all the kids love it. Very economical and he does a fantastic job especially for an online curriculum. I've watched him and from a teacher's perspective he knows what he's doing. History, language arts, literature. Do you like literature? No. You don't like reading books? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So it just depends on the book? Depends. This is where sunlight comes into play. This is year one of two. They combine history, language arts, and literature all into one, so they all relate to each other. So for history this year, uh, I never knew what a lap book was. And then my child did one for preparation for one of her sacraments and loved it. So I asked her if she wanted a lap book for history this year. And she said, yes, please. So I'll put a link down below to what a lap book is because it took me forever to understand what it was and appreciate it. So I purchased their American history lap book kit. There's a box, comes with everything you need to make a, a lap book of all the American history. So something she'll work on through the whole year. If you purchase their instructor's guide, it gives you questions for each of these books so you can go through and make sure comprehension and there's lots of great conversation starters in these. She has two history books that she'll work through. Beginner's American History and the Smithsonian American History. She'll be reading through the Bill of Rights, a true book if you're looking for these. Another one is the a true book, The Constitution of the U.S. Really important nowadays to know what this is all about. And the Lewis and Clark Expedition. Every year they have a poetry book and I love it because I cannot understand poetry to save my life and all my children love poetry and I can understand it. And they answer questions that I never would have been able to at that time. And I love the guidance that uh, Sunlight gives. So this one, uh, my kids don't like dust jackets. So <laughs> the dust jacket was missing. Uh, it's from Thrift Books, so it didn't come with a CD, but that's not a problem. Uh, but this one's called A Child's Introduction to Poetry. The next are the novels or books that they read. This list is the read alouds. She does not like me reading aloud to her. So I usually try to find these on CD or audiobook, or she just reads by herself. I'm a little leery on a couple of these because I know what it took for my other child when she went through this. So we'll see. We have The Peacemaker, Walk the World's Rim. I've read this one. The Witch of Blackbird Pond. Still has the dust jacket for now. The Sign of the Beaver. Johnny Tremaine. This is an example of one where I'm not quite so sure she'll do okay. I think I'm gonna have to get the audiobook for this one. Tolliver's Secret. Another one, Carry On, Mr. Bowditch. Audiobook, I think. Justin Morgan Had a Horse. Can't find my copy at the moment, so I'll put a picture here. I think one of the kids ran off with it to read it. The Story of the Amistad. These two we do not have yet, but I think the library does, or I will get them from thrift books later. It's The Journeyman and Winter Danger. So readers are the ones that they are to read on their own, and then we do reading comprehension. Sorry, kids are playing outside. The readers, they do on their own, so some of these are real thin, but some of them are more uh, novels size. This one I loved growing up, Sarah Plain and Tall. Timmy O'Dodd and The Big Ditch. And then what happened, Paul Revere? The Hazardous Tales of the Animal All-Stars. I hope YouTube doesn't 
ding me for this one just by saying it. The White House is burning. Nyanuki Fever, 1793. My soon to be eighth grader read this and was fascinated. Ohm Costo, The Cabin Faced West. TV The Spy, The Skipback School. The Secret of the Sealed Room. This is a nice thicker novel. The Thanksgiving Story. Squanto, Friend of the Pilgrims. Blood on the River. This one's quite thick and nice good no novel as well. And The Corn Grows Ripe. So Sunlight has either four or five day curriculum. We do the four day. So the extra books that are on the other curriculum, on the five day curriculum, we just buy as readers and I let the kids work their way through them throughout the year. Uh, I did get this one in copy because it looked, I couldn't find it anywhere else, but King George, what was his problem? Vostas. White Buffalo Story, The Courage of Sarah Noble, Bears on Hemlock Mountain, A Lion to Guard Us, Stone Fox, Tick Tac Lick Tac. All right, language arts. She's my first child that I have homeschooled since preschool. My mind is blown at the wonderful writer she has become. The way sunlight works through their language arts curriculum. It's short, it's sweet, it's not complicated. Every single grammar, they explain the application. She went from fighting me tooth and nail to even write a sentence in kindergarten to doing everything on her own. Mom, I don't need any help and writes these beautiful and magnificent stories. There's copy work and then grammar applying to it and then application and uh, writing. Little tip, at the end of every, each year, I pull out all their writing and then at the beginning of the next school year, I give them a little folder full of their writing from the previous year and they just delight in reading what they wrote the previous year and seeing their progress. Bible and church teaching. Okay, so she's gonna be working her way through the New Testament. And there's a little activity book. Not too impressed with this, but she'll, I know she'll enjoy this quite a bit. This is a new series. Not sure if I like it yet, but Our Holy Faith. She's gonna be working on book three. Uh, and then some saints she'll be reading about and Old Testament figures. This is uh, King David and his sons. And then as well as learning about St. Thomas, Thomas Aquinas. Typing. I completely forgot to record about this. Typing.com, it's free. Keeps track of your kid's progress, 10 minutes a day. When she's gotten good enough now, she gets to play the games. It's one time they have access to digital games. Other essentials. The final two things that we use and are essential. We invested in nice CD players for each of the kids in different colors. They have lots of audiobooks and books on things on CD they listen to. They, they were very excited to get those. And then I also invest in really cheap Dollar Tree clipboards. They like to decorate a new one every year. And then I put their schedule on each one. As you can see here, I have the date sequence it goes through, their name, and then we do a six weeks on, two weeks off. So here I'll put what, what week we're on and then their checklist throughout the day with various highlights and books they're supposed to be working on before they can go read their free time books. These are extremely handy. They fit anywhere and easy for me to check later. All right, the only thing that we are missing is foreign language. And I have heard about Talkbox Mom and I've researched it and I am very, very impressed. Ran out of curriculum money, so I'm waiting for that little thing, that to build up before I purchase our first box, but I'm looking forward to it. Everything I've heard, I'm gonna really like it. We will definitely do Spanish, which is because I was a Spanish major and Spanish teacher, and that's a resource I would like to use with our kids. And then we might work in sign language eventually if they ever come up with their own curriculum. Everybody's wanting to come in for the night. So thrift books is where I got most of these books. And then the ones I couldn't find on thrift books, I actually bought from Sunlight. You can just buy books from them. Remember, it is okay to make mistakes. Important part is to learn from them. God bless.